And joining us from Philadelphia to talk about this is Stephanie Humphrey, a tech writer for Ebony.com and a social media analyst. Stephanie, welcome. Good to see you. Thank you. Very good to be here. So tell me, how can Twitter, Twitter deal with this? What can they do? There's unfortunately not a whole lot they can do just because of the sheer volume of uh, tweeters out there. There's almost a half billion tweets going back and forth every day. So trying to maintain some sort of control over that type of volume is a little bit daunting. And I don't know that Twitter even wants to do that. They uh, proudly state in their policy that they do not actively mediate their content or control or screen their content in any way. And I think that's a big reason a lot of folks are on the service. So it's a kind of a catch-22. There's not a whole lot they want to do to try to quash that free speech aspect of their network, but there's also so many people on there that it's tough to get your arms around the whole thing. Isn't a big part of this that uh, these people are anonymous, that they can say whatever they want, nobody knows who they are? Absolutely, absolutely. And that is one thing that Twitter could do if they had the mind to do it would be to require folks to use their real names when they're logging in and creating these accounts because that does tend to deter some people from some of the sorts of speech that they have. But right now, Twitter doesn't even have a policy that explicitly states that speech that is racist or homophobic or sexist or anti-Semitic is not allowed. They don't actually call that sort of speech out. They only talk about abusive speech in very very general terms and it has to be targeted abuse as well so that leaves a lot of loopholes open for folks to pretty much say whatever they want as they go public though don't they face more pressure to do something about this Absolutely, absolutely. They have uh, an agreement coming up with NBC and Comcast uh, where they're going to be tr trying to provide some television content on Twitter. So those advertisers are not going to take too kindly to the backlash that they get from allowing this type of thing to happen on the network. Well, there are some limits. I mean, you can report someone who you think is abusing the privilege of, of using Twitter. What happens when you do that? Well, you can, they did change their uh, their feed so that it's just a one-click process to report abuse. But what happens is it kind of goes in the bucket with everything else. And again, that whole volume issue comes into play there. So you don't know when exactly they're going to get to your situation in particular. And then once that happens, somebody is actually determining using some sort of subjective, really, uh, interpretation of their policy as to whether or not your particular report was actually abusive. Because if it doesn't actually contain uh, language that specifically threatens you directly or is targeted towards you specifically, they may not consider it abusive. They may just consider it offensive. And in that case, they just recommend that you block that person. You know, I don't, want to, I don't want to minimize this because, I mean, there's some really horrible things that are online. And it's not, just, it's not just Twitter. I mean, what's happened through social media and the anonymity of the net is that you see websites, hate-filled websites, targeting all sorts of groups um, popping up. There have been a huge number of those uh, that exist as well. So it's not just Twitter, right? No, no, it's, it's all across the web. And again, that whole cloak of anonymity is what kind of gives people, I think, a little bit more courage. But what has been happening or, with Twitter specifically cowardice. and with some other sites... Or cowardice. Well, yeah, or that, or that, absolutely. But what's been happening with Twitter and some other sites is that the community has started to police some of these hateful things that come out. Because when, there, uh, when all the tweets came out about Miss America, there were a couple of people in particular that got a whole lot of backlash from the Twitter community in general and ended up closing their accounts. And there have been a lot of different blogs and websites that are dedicated really to putting these people out there and kind of publicly shaming them and trying to get the behavior to change that way. So it has become a situation where the community is actually policing the network. Well, Stephanie, we hope to talk again more about this. It's a fascinating topic. Thanks very much. Thank you.